All right, guys. Welcome to day two. If you made it this far, uh, then uh, you have navigated to your Classcraft account. You've opened up uh, Photoshop. Um, you've opened up the Nike shoe. And hopefully, um, if you do look at this Nike shoe, um, you're going to notice that it's, um, it's made up of what's called layers. All right. This is kind of your first look at Photoshop. Um, even if you were with me last semester, we didn't really play with Photoshop a whole lot or at all. Um, so this is going to be your crash course into Photoshop. Um, the first thing that you guys are going to want to do is actually open up Photoshop. So let me back up for those people who could not follow step two here, or step one, which was open up Photoshop. Okay. Um, so you're going to click right down here in your start menu. You're going to go to all apps. And eventually, um, I think you guys will have this folder under Adobe and everything will be in there. Mine's actually outside of the folder. And you're going to find Adobe Photoshop CC. You either have 2015 or 2017. So far, I haven't really seen much of a difference in either one of them. Um, 2015 and 2017 are very similar. So I'm rocking out with 2017 right here. So click on that and open up Photoshop. Second thing I want you to do is go ahead and click on your Nike shoe uh, link down here. Um, and that should open up in Photoshop. Um, when it does, it's going to look something like this. All right, and what we're doing is we're taking this basic Nike high top, <clears throat> and we're going to play around with some tools, some options, and our layers in order to basically color um, this Nike shoe and, and in order to create a new Nike shoe design. All right, um, this is a cool project. It's one of those projects that I like to print up the uh, results of and hang them up in the hallway. Um, so make sure your shoe doesn't look all ratchet. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this, guys. Um, basically, we're coloring, and I'm going to break this down for you in a couple um, different steps. Um, what we have on the left-hand side in Photoshop, if you look over here, are all of your tools. All right, this is really important. Your tools, even though this is kind of what you see, this isn't all of your tools. If you actually do click on a tool, let's click on this lasso tool right here. If you click on it and hold it down, you'll actually notice that you have tools underneath of your tools. Um, so there's a lot of tools in Photoshop, a lot. And that's the majority of the hard part of the program is that it's a, a super huge program, so it's really hard to get the hang of it. Um, you're also going to notice something over here on the right-hand side called layers. These layers are really important, probably the most important part of Photoshop. No matter what you're doing, you have to make sure that you're clicked on the correct layer um, in Photoshop because you're only going to be able to be able to edit the layer that you have selected. Um, Photoshop kind of works with layers and when you're all done with a project you basically flatten out your layers and you get rid of all these layers. But layers uh, basically allow you to take one thing from your shoe or from any picture and chop it out from the picture. So you can kind of see the Nike logo here is totally separate from the rest of the shoe. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you also have, if you make a mistake, you can say edit, undo, or step backwards. Um, you have undo up there, and you have step backwards, okay? So it's uh, kind of the same thing as Photoshop. You do have a limit of how many times you can step backwards. So if you make a mistake and you go too far, you won't be able to undo that mistake. You will have to start over, so be careful there. Um, you can see here, like, top strap, if I click on this layer, and I try to move the top strap, that's this little piece right here. So everything is kind of separated for us already. I'm going to hit undo, um, so that we can isolate certain pieces and color them um, certain colors, all right? So the first thing I'm going to do is, um, let's go ahead and color my logo, uh, the Nike check, all right? Um, so what I'm going to do is basically lock this layer right here. Uh, this lock button basically says that now I'm only messing around with this layer. I'm not messing around with any other layer, all right? Let's also go ahead and find our paintbrush tool. Our paintbrush tool... Uh, that's quick selection, I'm sorry, is right here. Um, what we're going to use for this one is actually the paint bucket tool. So if you actually hold um, down, there it is, I'm sorry, it's under gradient. Go to your uh, gradient tool. Everything, oh, things are a little different in 2017. All right, we'll get used to it. Uh, so here's your gradient tool. If you press that and hold that down, you're going to see something called a paint bucket tool. Um, you can use this to color. If you want, you can use your paint brush to color if you want. And notice when I click on my paint brush, um, which is kind of what I'm going to use for this one, I think. I'm not going to use my paint bucket after all, um, although I can. I'll show you both of them. So here's my paint brush. Right now, my brush size is super small. 
When you select a tool in Photoshop, notice how this up here all changes. This is called your options bar up here. So we have our layers over here, we have our tools over here, and then depending on what tool we pick, we have different options for that tool. So if I pick my quick selection, notice how my options have changed. If I click my paintbrush tool, notice how my options have changed. If I click my paint bucket tool, notice how my options have changed. So every tool has different options. Again, this is what makes Photoshop very difficult. It's a huge, huge program. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my paintbrush here. I'm gonna go ahead and increase my paintbrush size. Notice up here, I actually have a little drop down that says 13, okay? Um, all of these actually do something and we'll get into that in just a second, but right now I'm just gonna make my brush kind of large. I wanna be able to go over this Nike check with like one swoop, one paint, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and make it, uh, it looks like 168, uh, 168 pixels at a time, which means I'm gonna be coloring this thing uh, pretty quickly, all right? Right now I think I'm setting my color to black. If I click right here, on where it says set foreground color, I can actually change the color of the paint that I'm actually about to use. You can also do this right up here, okay? So let's just say that I want my Nike swoosh to be like a nice red, all right? Um, so I'm gonna say okay. Once I actually select that color red, I'm gonna select okay. Notice here that your colors actually have um, a code associated to them, all right? So red, this type of red is actually F4OEO8. This type of red is a little different, okay? Every time you click, you get a different code for a color. So let's just say okay for that one for right now. And as I click and drag, you can see basically I have basically colored my check, all right? It looks a little rough, it looks a little cartoonish because what I did was I actually covered up the stitching in the shoe. Um, so I'm gonna say edit undo brush tool. All right, so this is kind of important. When you go over here and you say mode, you actually want to set your mode um, to something called linear burn, all right? You're going to see that right down here. Linear burn will allow you to paint the check, and it'll allow you to keep the, um, the stitching into the shoe, so it keeps the shoe looking cartoonish. Also, be careful. The paintbrush tool acts like a paintbrush. Every time you go over this thing, it's going to get a little darker and a little darker. It's just like you're applying a layer of paint over it, over and over again, until now we have this kind of maroon-ish color. So every time you go over something, it's gonna actually darken it up. It's just like you taking a paintbrush and painting it over again. Okay, so let's say that I like that Nike logo. Um, I like that color. I'm just gonna be like, all right, I got that. I'm gonna go ahead and do my top strap. I'm gonna go up here again. Remember, you have to select the layer that you want to edit first. You're gonna say lock that layer. The top strap is right here. So right now I have this kind of maroon color kind of thing. Um, I'm gonna say for my top strap, I will probably want that to be, um, I don't know, let's say, um, first of all, let me just confess that I can't match colors at all. This is why I'm horrible in art. Um, colors are not my thing. So this is probably gonna look really rough. Hopefully yours looks a little bit better. I can barely match my um, shirt, pants, and shoes in the morning. So. Here we go. I'm gonna select this color blue. Again, I'm gonna lock the layer. I'm set up here to linear burn, and my paintbrush is still set to 168, which is fine. I'm gonna go ahead and go over the strap just like this. And even if I go outside of the strap, notice how I'm not coloring anything else except for that strap, all right? So I got my top strap colored. I'm gonna go ahead and do the front part of my shoe, okay? The front part of your shoe is literally this little piece right here, okay? And what I'm actually using, um, yeah. what I'm actually using is something called the Move Tool. The Move Tool is right here. It's your very first tool. Okay, your Move Tool is right here. We have your Paintbrush Tool right here. We have your Paint Bucket Tool right here. The Paint Bucket Tool is really cool. Uh, what it does is it basically allows me to paint a layer with literally just like one click. However, again. Um, if I'm designing this Nike shoe, what I don't want to worry about is the paint bucket not getting these little pieces like this. So I'm going to say undo. I'm going to say step backwards. And it's alternate control Z is the shortcut for step backwards if you want to go a little quicker. You can kind of see the shortcuts off here to the side. Okay. So let's just say I'm going to go back to my paintbrush tool now. It's right here, and I want to paint this, uh, you know, let's say I want to paint this another 
a uh, different color. Let's say I'm going to have like a Punky Brewster type shoe. It's probably a little bit before your guys' time. Let's say I want to have this nice green color for the front part of my shoe. Again, set to linear burn and go, ooh, what did I not do over here? Why does it? Why is it doing this? Um, first of all, it's because I didn't lock my layer. Okay, and it's an easy mistake to make. A lot of you guys will make this mistake. But go ahead and lock your layer, and now when you color over it, you'll see that you have this um, nice green color to your shoe. All right. Um, there's another little trick that I want to show you called a clone stamp tool, which is kind of cool. It's also a little bit tricky to get used to. All right. So what you guys are going to want to do if you want to use something called the clone stamp tool, which is a really good way to put pictures and patterns and stuff on your shoes. Um, you know, let's just say that this back strap right here, like this little area, which I think is um, back stitched, I want to say. Let's try it. Yep, that's it. That's back stitched. <clears throat> let's just say I want to put a picture on there. I'm going to use something called my clone stamp tool. It's all the way down here. If you look, it looks like a little stamper. When you hold it down, you have a pattern stamp tool and you have something called a clone stamp tool. Okay? I'm sorry. I said clone stamp tool. I'm using something called a pattern stamp tool. I'm going to go to pattern stamp tool. I'm going to go ahead and go um, online and let's say that I want to do like a Wildcats logo. I've already searched for it. This is our Wildcats logo right here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to save that image. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that you guys select your student numbers or your H drive to put this picture on. So click it and go ahead and hit save or change the number, uh, change the name of it to Wildcats. Okay. And then go ahead and hit save. When you do, it's going to download over here. What you're going to do is go to Photoshop and say file open, navigate to where you did save that picture to, and go ahead and open it up. It's going to open up in a new tab in Photoshop, and this is really important. Every single tab in Photoshop is a new project in Photoshop. So be careful. When you go to save your project to leave for the day, it's really important that you just have the one tab open of the project that you're actually working on. All this stuff needs to be closed out because every time you do a save, it's going to think this is another project that you're going to want to save, and this is another one. You're going to notice this when you go to save your first project in Photoshop. So now... You know, once you find a picture or a pattern that you want to use, and you don't have to use a picture, you can just use kind of fun patterns and shapes, you're going to go up here to the Edit tab, and you're going to say Define Pattern. When you say Define Pattern, you kind of want to rename it maybe, like Wildcat or something like that, and then say OK. Close that out once you're done. Don't save it. When you go up here now, um, make sure you're on your Pattern Stamp tool. When you go up here... <clears throat> to your actual options for your pattern stamp tool over here you're gonna notice your new pattern at the very bottom and you have some other patterns here that you can use so with my pattern um, my pattern stamp tool selected and my new pattern selected over here make sure again that you're set to linear burn over here um, so you don't cover up the stitching and I'm gonna say make sure again that your brushes are nice and large so that you can do this in kind of one fail swoop make sure that your layer is locked and let's see how this looks. Sometimes it looks really great, sometimes not. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. So there's the little Wildcats logo, and you can kind of see it's doubling up on itself. You can try to do this again if you step backwards and actually, um, oh, here, step backwards. If you actually resize your image before you actually use your pattern stamp tool, you can do this a little cleaner. But I'm not going to do that for this particular tutorial. So just play around with patterns. Um, it doesn't have to look perfect. All right. <clears throat> now, let's say that you're done. You've colored all of your layers here, and you have a finished Nike shoe product. All right. The first thing that you're going to want to do is actually um, flatten your layers. All right. So um, under layer, the layer tab up here, you're going to go down here to flatten image. Be careful. Once you flatten your image, that's it. You can't edit it anymore. All right. So only do this when you're completely done and you're ready to save this thing as a JPEG. Um, right now, it's not a JPEG. It's a PSD file. We're going to go over that in just a second. All right. So if I say flatten image, which I'm not going to do right now, it's going to um, basically flatten all my layers over here. And then um, you can kind of see, actually, I'll go ahead and do it. Flatten image. And you can kind of see all I have left is my background. All right. Once all that's done and I only have one tab up here, what I'm going to do is say File, Save As. <clears throat> Make sure you're clicked on your H drive. Again, I'm clicked on my USB drive. You're going to say Nike Shoe. 
Um, instead of a PSD project, you're actually going to change this to what's called a JPEG. All right, JPEG stands for Joint Photographic Experts Group. All right, you will need to know that. You have to remember that Joint Photographic Experts Group. So that's one of your keywords, and we'll discuss that in just a second. All right, once you save it as a JPEG, and this is only if you're totally done and you hit save. That's it. You can't touch this shoe anymore. Um, you actually do have a PSD file, um, hopefully because you saved it. Right here, you always want to say um, high quality or maximum image options or highest quality options and say OK. All right. And now you're going to notice that up here it says shoe JPEG. All right. If I actually go to my files and actually look at my USB disk, this is the last one I have modified now. It's my Nike shoe JPEG image. All right. This was the file that we started with. Notice how it actually has an Adobe Photoshop extension on it. This is kind of what you want. Let's just say you're not done. It's the end of the day today. You're not done. You need to save the shoe. You need to move on. You're going to basically say file. You're going to say save as. You're not going to change this from this, its PSD file. If you want to edit this tomorrow, you want to save this as a PSD file, okay? Um, and then just go ahead and say Nike shoe and USB disk, all right? And then you're going to hit save. Now, if I look at my file directory, which has magically disappeared, yeah, it's totally gone. <clears throat> you would see that um, I had a PSD file as well called Nike shoe, all right? So file names are really important. PSD files, which are Photoshop files. Um, allow you to just kind of open the project and pick up where you left off. Just like with anything, guys, you're going to want to come up here and do a save occasionally as you're doing your work. Sometimes we do lose um, power. Sometimes we do lose uh, a lot of work because we don't do saves as we're doing our work. So <clears throat> let's just recap real quick. When you do your Nike shoe, our focus is basically getting used to layers, making sure that you know how to select layers as you color your shoe. Um, the other part of this project is getting used to your uh, paintbrush tool, which is right here, getting used to your options up here that come with every single tool, getting used to your modes, which is set to linear burn right now. I love it when I get interrupted by nonsense. Okay. Um, so you're going to notice... Uh, Everything over here has different options depending on what tool you have selected. Your goal today is just kind of get used to your get used to your colors, get used to your layers, get used to your tools over here, and get used to your tool options. Your shoe doesn't have to be perfect, but you do have to have a finished product by next Tuesday, which is a lot of time. Um, all right, guys, enjoy this uh, project. I think it's a real fun one, and uh, I will see you guys on Tuesday.